Good afternoon, everybody. May I extend a sincere welcome to all of you. It is our pleasure here at St. Thomas Aquinas to welcome you on this, the opening of this exhibition of major importance. There are so many dignitaries here. I'll let somebody else do the introductions, but I want all of you to feel welcome at home from all parts of the country, the county, or the world. I'd like to introduce uh, our superintendent for Catholic schools for the Archdiocese of Miami, Dr. Kim Przybylski. Kim, would you please stand? And our principal, Mrs. Tina Jones. <clears throat> As I have said to all our guests, our visitors, and our students especially, uh, we're most happy to have you join us here today. At St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, we endeavor to form in our students a respect for the dignity of human life. Hopefully our students, and eventually as graduates, they can carry that message through the years and help assure the people everywhere that they will emphasize the importance of such respect. The exhibit we reflect on today highlights an unthinkable tragedy perpetrated by one agency of mankind to another. Unless we learn from this horrific event, it could happen again and sharing the story with people everywhere will help protect all people. For those who suffered and lost life, we pray that the just God will welcome them into the eternal kingdom where no one can take it from them. And for those who experienced extreme hardship, and some are here today, we express admiration and affection. You showed us how to endure adversity and in its extremity. So let us go forward now, positively cultivating respect for each other, especially for those who need it. Again, welcome to all of you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Monsignor Kelly. What a privilege it is to be here with you and your school today. My name is Ted Gover. I'm the executive director of the Foundation for California. I am delighted to be at an institution named after the angelic doctor that began the Western world on the educational course that is still with us today. So thank you to St. Thomas Aquinas High School for your commitment to learning and for having us here. Uh, we have a very full program here today and as the event MC, I have committed to the school that we will keep this event to under an hour. Uh, our students need to have time to view the exhibit and they need to have time to return to their afternoon commitments. Um, I'm going to step right in and introduce our first three speakers, each of whom are on a tight time schedule and following their remarks, they need to head off to uh, their next uh, commitment. Uh, our first speaker is a familiar and respected name given his service to Florida, Congressman Ted Deutsch of Florida's 21st Congressional District, serves as assistant whip to House Minority Whip Steny Hoyer. He also serves on the House Judiciary, House Ethics, and House Foreign Affairs Committees. Congressman Deutsch is currently serving his third term in the U.S. House of Representatives. I'd like to ask the congressman to say a few words, please. Forgive me, I've been remiss. Let us first do the pledge, and then Congressman Deutsch will speak. We could have a student leader come up and lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ted, thank you very much. Hey, Monsignor Kelly, it's an honor to be with you here uh, at, at St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, and it's a um, particular thrill for me to be here with so many of my friends and respected elected officials. Uh, I want to thank the Simon Wiesenthal Center and the Foundation for California, especially the Foundation for bringing this exhibit, The Courage to Remember, to our community. Uh, it's so important that we not only continue to honor the memory 
of those who perished in the Holocaust, but that we continue to, to educate one another about the atrocities of the Holocaust. To the survivors who are here today, thank you for your courage. Kendra Levy, thank you for being here uh, to share your story. Each year, I attend the National Days of Remembrance Memorial at the Holocaust M Museum in Washington. Last year's theme was choosing to act, which reminds us of those who chose to risk their own lives to save the lives of others, their friends, their neighbors, even strangers. It brings to mind some of the most famous that are honored as the righteous among nations, Swedish diplomat Raoul Wallenberg in Budapest, the German industrialist Oskar Schindler at his factory in Poland, Miep Gies who hid Anne Frank in Holland, and the Danish resistance fighters who ferried out of Denmark uh, almost all of Denmark's Jews to safety in Sweden. But many of those who hid Jews in their home during the Holocaust, who took in children as members of their own family, who provided false documents to, to families or smuggled Jews out of their home countries, were just ordinary people trying to do the right thing. And throughout the years, I've been privileged to represent South Florida, and I've heard many stories of Nazi persecution. And it's my responsibility, I think, to help make the legacies, uh, make sure that they're not only understood, but they're preserved for generations to come. Even though the horror of the Holocaust occurred over 70 years ago, the memory of the tragic events must never be forgotten. That's why we have to continue to come together to remember the more than six million lives that were lost and continue to work to make sure that no generation ever idly sits by while millions suffer elsewhere. We have to take the lessons and apply them now because they are so relevant now. And we have to apply them into the future. We have to stand on behalf of those around the world who continue to face persecution for religion or for gender. And when we say never again, we have to do everything we can to put real weight behind that phrase. That's why I continue to work not only on behalf of survivors, but for the memories of those who perished. The survivors in this community and throughout the world deserve to live out their lives with, di with dignity. They deserve proper health care. They shouldn't have to make decisions about whether to buy food or whether to buy medicine. And the greatest privilege that I have representing this community of South Florida and the United States Congress uh, is really the honor to represent one of the largest populations of Holocaust survivors in the world. These are men and women who struggled against all odds through incredibly horrific times, who came to this country and to this community seeking not just a new life and a new home, but who have shared their experiences with generations to ensure, as I said before, that never again is more than just words. These men and women, the survivors who live among us in our community, they show us the true meaning of the words dignity and strength and courage, and they remind us of hope, hope that things will definitely get better. All of us, and this is a message to the high school students especially, all of us, all of you, everyone in this room has the responsibility to speak out against atrocities that take place anywhere in the world. These aren't just problems of the past, and we've got to prevent them from becoming the problems of the future. Whether it's terrible atrocities in Syria, human rights abuses in places like Iran, the fight for democracy in Egypt and so many other places around the world, human trafficking, forced child slavery, the universal rights, the universal rights of all men and women and children are rights that we have an obligation to speak out about. To all of you here today, all of the young people, every one of you has the ability to do something just as powerful and just as meaningful, speaking out for those who can't speak for themselves. You're the last generation, and this is an incredibly important point, you're the last generation who will have the opportunity to hear directly from survivors. It's up to you to carry on their legacy. It's up to you to make sure that the world understands what never again means. And I'll close with a very short story. I had the privilege of visiting the Dachau concentration camp outside of Munich uh, several months back. Uh, and I, I visited with a survivor named Abba Naor. He lives in Israel, but he travels back to southern Germany to speak to high school students. 
And we had the chance to spend time together, he and I, and I got to introduce him to some of my colleagues who were with me. And the thing that he said that was so powerful to me is the message of this exhibit and it's the message of this day. As we were finished and as we, we turned to, uh, to go our separate ways, he walked back up and he grabbed my hand and he said, I want to thank you for remembering. That's what this is about today. Seize the opportunity to really understand what this exhibit provides. I have so much appreciation for uh, your school for hosting this. Uh, I know how powerful this will be for all of you, and I look forward to the leadership that every one of you in this room will provide, not just in your communities now, but in our world for years to come. Uh, it's been a great privilege to be with you here today. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Congressman. We are delighted to have with us today Broward County Sheriff Scott J. Israel. Sheriff Israel has served in law enforcement for 30 years, spending the first 25 years with the Fort Lauderdale Police Department. Among his many accomplishments throughout his career, Sheriff Israel served as Chief of Police in North Bay Village, and he graduated from the 212 session of the FBI National Academy. Sheriff Israel, we'd be grateful if you could say a few words. Good afternoon. I'd like to first, uh, Monsignor, thank you for, for putting a forum like this on. This is nothing short of spectacular. I truly appreciate it. To my esteemed colleagues, uh, it's an honor to be here. But most importantly, what's going to make this day an incredible success is that the student body is here. And most of my message is going to be directed to you. A um, few months back, I was over at the um, a temple in Sunrise. and. I was going to speak that night, and these two elderly gentlemen, they were both in their 90s, they were on the program. And basically what happened at this very temple, three weeks before this night, uh, these two gentlemen were at service. One was exiting the temple, and one was entering the temple, two services. They, had, they looked at each other. They were with their families. Neither one could drive, and they were, they were both on walkers. And as they were exiting and entering, they looked at each other and they passed and they both started to shake and cry and hug each other. They had not seen each other in 60 years. The last time they saw each other was in a concentration camp. And the most amazing thing about it was, and I'm getting goosebumps speaking to you now, was that they recognized each other. Um, so the temple was putting on programs and I got to, to sit and listen. They didn't speak, you know, a, a whole lot. But one of the men, Simon, he was telling me that the best thing that anybody could do is to let our young people know that the Holocaust was real, it happened, it's true, and as uh, Congressman Deutsch said, never again. So what does never again mean? Never again means as young people, you cannot allow, you're the future of this country and you know that, you cannot allow laws that we created to protect people and help people be allowed to, to be used to discriminate against one race or one religion or one group. I urge you to make this word one of the most important parts of your vocabulary as you lead your lives, and that's interfaith. Believe as your, believe as your parents and your teachers and, and your priests and your pastors and your rabbis have taught you. Believe strongly in that. Believe strongly in God but also respect others' rights to believe a different way. They don't have to change your way of thinking and you don't have to change theirs, but we have to respect each other's rights. Um, it's just the right thing to do. It, it, it's, it's, you know, it, I'm not trying to preach, but it's what God would want. I ask you young people today as you go through the exhibit, and I've been, I've been uh, twice up to the uh, Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. For the 30, 40, 50 minutes that you're at this uh, uh, the presentation, put everything else out of your mind. Forget about that essay, that homework, football practice. Forget about everything else and really concentrate on this. And I think if you digest just how horrific this was and, and remember my story about two men who just started crying and crying and couldn't compose themselves, um, it's very powerful. Think interfaith. Respect everyone else's right to believe. 
Um, it's an honor to be your sheriff and it's the first Jewish sheriff in the state of Florida, knowing that this type of event is held at a, a, at a wonderful Catholic high school. It's all inspiring to me, Monsignor. So again, I truly appreciate it. God bless, uh, God bless you, each and every one of you. Godspeed and young people. Thank you for listening to me. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, Sheriff. Our third speaker is Florida State Representative Richard Stark of District 104. Representative Stark was elected to the Florida State House in 2012, and he serves on the Finance and Tax Subcommittee as well as the K through 12 subcommittee, among others. Welcome, Representative Stark. We'd be grateful for a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. I uh, just want to thank uh, St. Thomas Aquinas for hosting this event. Uh, promise to be brief, but I did want to discuss one thing. We're talking about the Holocaust. And the Holocaust had plenty of individuals who spoke out and opposed it what the events while they were happening. But unfortunately, uh, Germany as a society condoned what was going on. You did have some individuals speak out. And so while we're asking you as high school students and going moving forward to remember this, but is to remember this as a society, not just individually. Now this brings me up to a quote that I'm gonna read. You probably have heard it before. Uh, Paul Harvey in his uh, news broadcast used to talk about the rest of the story. So this is a quote by a gentleman named Martin Niemöller, who was a man of God. He was ordained with the Evangelical Church of the Old Prussian Union. And he originally was one of the people who supported Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party, figuring that they were gonna do good things for Germany. Uh, but as a man of God, uh, it turned out that he was subject to the same problems that a lot of uh, individual groups were. And, uh, Hitler had a Nazification program against churches. And uh, for somebody who's supporting this, he became a well-known German anti-Nazi theologian. And uh, for his speaking out, he was uh, interned at uh, Dachau uh, from uh, 1937 through the end of the war, almost executed, and um, you know, survived his imprisonment. So I am gonna read you his quote. I know you may have heard it before, but it's an important quote. It is in the Holocaust Museum in Washington. So here is the quote. First they came for the communists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out, for I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists. I did not speak out. I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews. Well, I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. So remember these words, they're in a lot of different places. This is a very controversial guy. You know, we, you know, he was not really a friend of the Jews or a lot of other groups, but he recognized what can happen. So thank you very much for having me at this program, and thank you very much, St. Thomas, for hosting this event. I now want to introduce Fort Lauderdale Commissioner Dean Trentalis, who serves District 2. Commissioner Trentalis maintains a successful law practice in Broward County. For more than 30 years, he has served on numerous boards and committees, among them the Fort Lauderdale Citizen Review Board, Broward House, and the John Graves Foundation Board of Trustees. Commissioner Trentalis, if you would please say a few words. I have 23 seconds, so. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dean Trantalis, newly elected city commissioner to the city of Fort Lauderdale. Um, I think it's uh, uh, more than a coincidence that today we are speaking about uh, courage and things to remember. Uh, today, as you all know, is the 50th anniversary of the speech by Martin Luther King, who came to Washington uh, and spoke on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial to talk about the dream, the dream of America, the dream of all peoples who live in America. And that speech was about the idea of acceptance and equality. Um, 
I think that there are many people who come to America thinking that equality is going to welcome them at the front door at the steps of this, of this great country. But unfortunately, we as a society have yet to understand the importance of acceptance and equality. Um, I think it's wonderful, Monsignor Kelly and uh, uh, Principal Jones, thank you for having us here today uh, because I think that having a, a, a discussion about equality uh, at your school is, is the first step in understanding that all people are created equal and all people should be given the same measure of justice under the law. As we think back at the Holocaust, um, and Congressman Deutsch talks about having gone to Dachau while I was in Poland a number of years ago and was driving along the road and we came upon the gate to Auschwitz. And to be honest, I could not go through that gate. My stomach turned and we just, I said, keep going. I could not imagine walking through those doors. It's a very heinous experience to think that this world will continue to kill others based on ethnicity, sexual orientation, race, religion. We hear about it every single day. What's already happening in Syria, what continues to happen in Egypt, and what is happening in our own community. You know, we like to point fingers around the world about other countries and other cultures and how difficult it is for them to cope with change in the idea of equality. But let's just remember one thing. Equality also begins here at home. And it's important that the simplest things that we do in everyday life sometimes manifest a prejudice that we grew up with. When you walk through the halls of this school or whatever playgrounds you are in or stores or wherever meeting places you may be, and you often see episodes of one student bullying another. Bullying is the foundation of social oppression. Whenever you decide that somebody should be marginalized, that is, kept separate, pushed out, not belonging to what you consider mainstream America, that's exactly where this all starts. So, it, it's wonderful that we talk about the idea of remembrance and never forget, and let's make sure we aren't that kind of people. But the seeds of that still linger within our culture and, our, and, our, and who we are as people. We must fight that. We must fight that with our every being. Because as we see episodes of bullying here in school, for whatever the reason may be, you know that that is objectionable, and you must you must take it upon yourself as a, as a person, as a student in this school, as a person in this community, to intervene and say, stop it. This can't continue. You know, I've been um, an activist uh, for about 25 years now. I've been an activist in trying to promote equality within our community. I was a person who co-wrote uh, in the mid-90s a, a law at Broward County to provide equality for sexual orientation for those who chose to work and live in places where before they were unaccepted. And it's important that we recognize the steps that this society takes moving forward to make sure that we are all equal. And I'm sure in the eyes of God, we all think we are equal, but we must treat each other that way because that is his work. And if we, dis if we decide that we are not going to act that way, we are defying his word. So I might say today, let's leave this, when we leave this, uh, this ceremony and we thank each other for participating, I hope that you can walk out of here saying to yourself that I am that better person. I will make sure that we do not participate in bullying and that we will never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We are thrilled to have with us today an alumna of this institution, Florida State Representative Katie Edwards. Representative Edwards was elected to the Florida State House in 2012, and she serves District 98. She serves on the Agriculture and, Natural and National Resources Committee, among other important commitments. Her affiliations are so many, I couldn't possibly mention all of them and still be under the one hour time limit I've been given. But a few highlights. 
Representative Edwards serves on the Broward County Farm Bureau, Hadassah, and best for last, the St. Thomas Aquinas High School Alumni Association. I'd like to welcome Representative Edwards to the podium. Well, good afternoon. It's great to be back here at St. Thomas, Monsignor, Mrs. Jones. It's so great to see you and be with you. You know, we have more in common than meets the eye. I attended St. Gregory from kindergarten to eighth grade. I graduated from St. Thomas in 1999 and was followed by three siblings and six cousins. And I also share the same Raider love for pep rallies, beat tags, the Christmas sing-alongs, Kalini, and of course, prayers for our football team. Um, as a fellow St. Thomas Aquinas Raider, though, I know how important faith is to all of us. And as you view the exhibit today, you'll question how and why the Holocaust could ever happen. What could possibly make someone hate the Jews so much that they'd want to round them up in cattle cars, place them in gas chambers, perform scientific experiments on them, execute them, and discard their bodies like trash? I ask you, how much do you know right now about the Jews and about the Jewish faith? How often do you question the stereotypes and notions that you may have or you may have been raised with with people of other faiths. I know it sounds funny, but we do have to talk about things like this very openly. How often do you equate Jews with money, with cheapness, with big noses, with the Long Island princesses, all those negative stereotypes that are so pervasive in our culture and society today that we simply just brush off or accept as part of a stereotype? It's okay to admit to yourself silently that you've either once thought or held this notion, or you've heard these types of anti-Semitic comments. But here in 2013, what can I do, what can we all do to better educate you and inform your views of those who may have a different philosophy on religion and culture? Because essentially, that's what really differentiates Catholics from Jews. There are many who may avoid talking about things like religion, you do it in your theology classes on a day-to-day -day basis five days a week, but when you get older, you'll find people don't like to talk about religion or politics. The ability to be able to talk openly and honestly about your views and your beliefs breaks down those perceptions that create these uninformed notions that lead to such stereotypes and anti-Semitism and things like the Holocaust. Like Catholicism, Judaism is a beautiful religion full of culture, tradition, education, and spirituality that also leads us to a closer relationship with God. In closing, I pray that you experience the joy that comes from the warmth and the comforting light of God tonight and always, and I would ask that peace be with you as well. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you, Representative. We have with us today a very special treat. We have with us a survivor of the Holocaust, Cantor Emil Levy, who I am fortunate enough to work with and to know. The survivors are our very special treasures. They don't need documentation to tell you about the Holocaust. They were there. They witnessed the atrocities. They lived through it. They know it. So we're always very grateful when a survivor is with us and who can testify to the terrible events of that tragic period. Cantor Levy, welcome, sir. We're very happy to have you here. A brief background on this gentleman. Cantor Levy was born in Czechoslovakia, where he survived the horrors of the Holocaust. After the war, he emigrated to Israel, where he served his new country honorably and bravely in a number of different capacities. And he's currently the CEO of the Flame Society, uh, an organization that provides Holocaust education through TV programs, classroom materials, and other mediums. Uh, we are uh, very happy to have Cantor Levy here. He has agreed to both give a memorial prayer as well as say a few words for us.
we are uh, celebrating in America a dream, Martin Luther's dream. But we are not celebrating the dream, we are celebrating hearing his dream and realize it to our day-by-day -day life. I have also a dream. Everybody's dreaming. I had a dream, an old dream, almost 4,000 years old. Our father, Abraham, was dreaming that people on the earth will pray to one God, the creator of the world, the creator of us. It's for me really realization of a dream, even if it's not the first time. <clears throat> Forgive me. It's not the first time that I pray together with non-Jews. Because Baruch Hashem, blessed be his name, we realize and we continue to realize day by day that we all are God's children. We all pray to the same God. And among brothers and families happen there some things that don't go so smooth. But they are still brothers. They are still looking up to their father. And therefore, before I'm going to talk and mostly to the young generation, I would really here in this place give a Hebrew prayer for to the memory, not only the Jews, millions of other people, millions who gave their lives because of one word, hatred. So please rise and listen to me. Hashim <laughs> לנשמות חללי מלחמת העולם השנייה, קורבנות גרמניה הנאצית, ילדים, סבים ואבותם, בגן עדן חתום. לכן בעל הרחמים יסתירם בסתר כנפיו לעולמים ויצרון בצרור החיים את נשמתם אדוני הוא נחלתם וינוחו בשלום, שלום על משכבם, ונאמר אמן. Thank you. Good to see you. I'm standing before you as a leftover, an unfinished work of Hitler. 
and when I stepped out first time in Germany, feeling, seeing by me happened to be British soldiers who put their hands on my shoulder and asked me if they can help me. I realized I am free. I looked up and I thought, said to God, you saved my life, but I'm going to give my life for you. I'm going to be my, give my life to make the world better. The world should understand that we are all human beings. And since then, I worked in the illegal Aliyah, illegal immigration against the British army in Palestine, in Europe. I had the papers that I can go around because I am freed from Germany Nazi camps. And when I got older, my father, he should rest in peace, in Israel was a cantor. And I studied here at the Yeshiva University, and I asked my father, I came to America, and I heard that the rabbis are making much more money than cantors. And I asked my father where I should go, to the rabbinate or cantorate. And my father answered me, my dear son, rabbis are talking to people, cantors are talking to God. And I picked up the cantorate because I have a long discussion. I have a long friendship with God. He is in me like he is in each of you. Each of us has a piece of God in his heart. We have only be able to use it. My friends, let's forget about remembering. What is remembering? I saw three days ago a friend of mine said to him, Moshele, I remember Rosh Hashanah, second day of Rosh Hashanah of the Jewish uh, New Year's was your bar mitzvah. It was your, he said, oh, thank you for remembering me. This is remembrance to come once a year and to remember the poor Jews who were killed or the two poor. No, we have to carry on from today on the knowledge and the belief day and night on the street, wherever we are, that we have to be united. We have to be human beings. Hatred is no more in our midst. Love, understanding. And I'm telling you, 70 years ago, 70 years ago, they killed Jews because they were Jews. So in Europe, I came to Israel, and I had the dream to die as a hero in the army. I served almost 30 years in the Israeli army. And I can tell you one thing, that the Jew, as he was killed in Europe because he's a Jew, the Jew in Israel, is fighting and ready to die because he wants to be a Jew. But he doesn't want to be a Jew. He wants to be a member of the entire community. And for you, my dear students who made it business to sit here, and thanks for the school again. And uh, I would like to make, mention here a few things to thank, first of all, for uh, one of the of the sponsors of this wonderful exhibition, the CNS, CNSFF, that they are sponsoring with, together with the Simon Weizenthal Museum, that this museum, this exhibition should go from place to place. My dear youngsters, take your time. Don't go around the panels and look. Read what is said. Oh, every letter in it is written by blood, with blood. Read, understand, think about it. 
put yourself in the position and say, promise yourself that no more hatred, understanding, every human being has a mission. He was born the same way by all of us, with a mission. We don't know what his mission is. Sometimes we condemn him and we don't know maybe that was his mission to do something what we don't like. But keep this in mind. You are here, learn and go out and speak about it and learn to love. The secret of life is love. Love your neighbor as yourself. I thank you for your attention and God bless you. Thank you, Cantor Levy. Thank you so much. I wanted to take a moment and read to you a message from Rabbi Abraham Cooper, the Associate Dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center. He could not be with us today, but he very much wanted to have his voice heard at this important gathering. On behalf of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, I wish to commend the incredible devotion of the Foundation for California in bringing the Courage to Remember exhibit to communities across America and around the world. I also want to commend SNCF for its commitment to learning and imparting the difficult lessons of the Shoah, including those related to their predecessors during World War II. Simon Wiesenthal, the great Nazi hunter, said, the history of mankind is a history of crimes. No crime in the annals of history was more meticulously documented by its perpetrators, bystanders, interveners, and victims than Nazi Germany's final solution that systematically murdered six million European Jews. Yet, collective memory is under assault. The wonderful Floridians gathered here today may not be able to do much to thwart the schemes of bigots and anti-Semites who spread hatred and deny the Holocaust. However, you are taking a leadership role in fighting our greatest enemy of all, apathy and forgetfulness. Our Jewish sages taught us in remembrance lies the root of redemption, in forgetfulness the root of destruction. By coming here today, we are declaring never again to hate, never again to genocide, and hope lives when people remember. Shalom. I uh, am pleased that Florida State Representative Gwendolyn Clark Reed is with us today. Representative Clark Reed serves District 92, and she has served in the Florida State House since 2008. She has had a distinguished career and currently serves as the Democrat ranking member of the K-12 subcommittee as well as the Veterans and Military Affairs subcommittee, among many other responsibilities. It is with great pleasure that I welcome her to the podium. Good afternoon to the Monsignor and the other administrators here at St. Thomas Aquinas. I am honored to be here, and particularly on this day when, as you've heard, and I'm sure you've heard all weekend, that we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech and the March on Washington. We must remember, the courage to remember is very important. If we do not remember, then we do not know where we're going. We have to know from whence we came to know where we should be going. You know, Dr. King had said, and I paraphrase, injustice to one is injustice to all. We cannot look at each other as a brother if we are determined to not treat each other equally. So I'm asking you, as we heard the word love and the word life, that's what it's about. I lived through the civil rights movement. I am a survivor also. I was a part, uh, I'm a native Floridian, as I tell everyone, don't let the New York accent fool you. I was born in Delray Beach. And as I came back and forth from the north to the south, I had to change my way of doing things when I came to the south. 
um, I would come here, and of course, I had to ride on the train car on Amtrak that all of you see running up and down Tri-Rail was segregated. They had cars where only, as at that time we were called Negroes, could ride. So you couldn't go into the dining cars to have dinner, so you would pack a little shoebox. And we all in the black community know about what it means to be uh, not treated equally. Because with that, if I didn't have that shoebox, I could not eat on that long trip from New York to Florida. So I want to say that we've come a, a quite a ways. Things have changed, but we should never forget. And it's always, as I tell my own children, that you don't know what your mother and your dad went through to get you where you are. But as you, as I, as you watched me, and as you tell me now, you understand why we did the things we had to do. It is because life is so precious. Life is worth giving to lay down for your brother to be sure that equality and injustice no longer exists. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Uh, a little bit about the organization with which I'm involved, uh, the Foundation for California. We were started in the mid-1980s uh, with the intention of um, uh, stirring debate and discussion of important public policy issues in California and beyond. Uh, we put on conferences and seminars and forums, and we handle exhibits ranging on topics from the Holocaust to Native Americans. This exhibit, which you're about to see, is a creation of the Simon Wiesenthal Center and its educational arm, the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles. It was created by some of the best exhibit designers here in the United States and in England, some of whom were affiliated with the British Museum. It is an internationally recognized exhibit. It appeared for the first time on the 50th anniversary, uh, on the 50th anniversary of the Anschluss, and that appropriately was opened in Vienna, Austria. Uh, this exhibit, of course, helps us to remember and to commemorate what the Holocaust meant for the destruction of European Jewry, as well as the destruction of so many other peoples. We remember and study the Holocaust because it was the results of orders by a government to exterminate an entire people from the face of the earth. We must also remember, of course, the brave members of the church who resisted Nazi tyranny and who perished because of it. And of course, we need to remember the courageous Catholics who rescued Jewish children and hid them uh, during the Shoah. We also, of course, remember that today is the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's March on Washington. So given our diverse society, we all have a stake in this exhibit in one way or another. Let me say that this exhibit is a partnership between the Simon Wiesenthal Center, the Foundation for California, the Foundation for Holocaust Education Projects located in Hollywood, uh, Florida, here in Broward County, um, as well as St. Thomas Aquinas High School, in addition to SNCF, the French National Railway, who was kind enough to make a contribution which allowed us to take this exhibit on its current tour. We are grateful for the contribution we received from SNCF, and we are grateful for the opportunity to work with the Simon Wiesenthal Center. This is a very positive and successful collaboration. I should add that St. Thomas Aquinas has been a gracious host, pulling out all the stops, making it such a positive experience. It's been a real pleasure working with Joe Bossi, Karen, and their team, who have made everything so easy here. So, we thank you for throwing open your arms to us. Thank you. Um, I am happy to have Bruce Udowitz here today. Bruce is the Chief Operating Officer of the Jewish Federation of Broward County, an organization that has been a partner and friend of this collaborative education effort here in Florida. Bruce has kindly agreed to say a few words.
Thank you. I'm sure that you've heard a lot of things, and some of the things I had written uh, have already been said, but I want to reiterate uh, some of them. First of all, I'm really delighted to be here and to be part of this uh, event, this opening this, of the exhibit today. And on behalf of the Jewish Federation of Broward County, the Jewish community of Broward County, which includes over 5,000 Holocaust survivors as part of our community, I, I want to thank St. Thomas Aquinas High School uh, and all of the staff and you students uh, for making this exhibit, for hosting this exhibit, and the three sponsors uh, who you've just heard about. One of the things, this is called the courage to remember. But without memory, we are doomed to repeat mistakes and failures of our past. Without memory, we lose an important motivation to take action, to remove evil, and the obstacles to making the world a better place for everyone. Without memory, we would have no hopes, no dreams, no aspirations for ourselves, our families, our community, or the world. This exhibit is important to see now because as you heard from Cantor and from other people, we are the last generations that will be able to personally hear from the survivors, from the liberators, and even to witness the trials of the perpetrators. We will have the last living connection. It will then become our responsibility because what will be left to our children, our grandchildren, and, our, and the rest of the people who will follow us will be exhibits like this one, will be written articles, will be oral histories, videos, and, and audio uh, tapes, but no personal connection. We remain that last personal connection uh, to people like Cantor Levy and others. You've heard that today we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. What a lot of people don't remember was the speaker who spoke right before Dr. Martin Luther King. And maybe his words weren't so memorable, but it is interesting to know his story. His name was Rabbi Joachim Prinz. He was one of the leading rabbis of the Berlin Jewish community when the Nazis came to power. He was able to leave Nazi Germany in 1937 before the worst persecutions and before the horrors of the Holocaust. And the reason he decided to speak at that day was because of what he personally had experienced in Germany and he had made a commitment in his life and a commitment on that day. He was compelled to commit his life and his efforts to stand up and not be silent in the face of other kinds of oppression and bigotry. So I commend you all to take the lessons of this exhibit to heart, to dedicate yourselves to help us all make our world a safer and better place for everyone. Thank you, Bruce. It is my pleasure to introduce Florida State Representative George Moritis of District 93. Representative Moritis was elected to the Florida State House in 2010. He serves as the Vice Chair of the Choice and Innovation Subcommittee and the Finance and Tax Subcommittee, in addition to a, a number of other important duties. Representative Moritis, please share a few words. Well, thank you very much. I first want to thank the Monsignor and, and the students uh, for coming today. And again, it is important, as, as much as these stories are important, that we take something from them. Uh, I'm going to be very brief. At first, I'm going to talk about my personal connection to this. And it's really through my grandfather, who is from southern Germany. Um, and he came over uh, before the Holocaust. Um, but he had relatives there that lived near, I guess it was Dachau in southern Germany. And um, some of his relatives lived in the States. Some of them were still in Germany. Uh, and this is after World War II, and the people living in the States, the German uh, that had been living in the States, when their relatives came over from Germany, said, we've heard all these horrible stories about what happened, and we really just can't believe that. We can never believe that, that people like us would ever do this, that, that our family members could be involved in something like that. And the people from Germany said, it's true. 
we could actually smell the flesh from the ovens. And I say that because it's so important that we don't forget these things. And, and, and God bless you, sir, for coming and sharing with us. And I would just say as a contemporary event, when we watch what's happening in Syria, regardless of your political persuasion, regardless of what you think about our president, what do you think about our country for watching a chemical attack and then doing nothing about it because because we don't care? And that's exactly what was happening in World War II. So many people didn't care. And that's that's the story. And I, I'm, I'm, I promise to be brief. God bless each one of you, and thank you for coming today. Thank you, Representative. Um, we're getting close to the ribbon cutting, I promise. Uh, our next speaker is not here today, but I will read a letter briefly that he kindly prepared. He is Alain LeRae of the company SNCF, whose contribution made this exhibit tour possible. It is my honor to work closely with the Foundation for California and the Simon Wiesenthal Center to bring this exhibit to St. Thomas Aquinas High School. I want to thank St. Thomas Aquinas High School for kindly hosting this exhibit. What an opportunity and what a mitzvah. Some of you may be asking yourselves, why is the French National Railway sponsoring Holocaust education in Fort Lauderdale? As some of you may know, SNCF, the French National Railway, participated in the deportation from France of 76,000 Jews and others to death camps during the Holocaust. As in other occupied nations, the Nazis commandeered the French rail facilities and used them for their evil plans. SNCF has dedicated itself to Holocaust education and to supporting worthy programs of remembrance and education. Our efforts help to strengthen the Shoah Memorial in Paris, Remembrance Memorials in France, Yad Vashem in Israel, and the joint efforts of the Simon Wiesenthal Center's Museum of Tolerance and the Foundation for California in providing this traveling exhibit to venues large and small. I am the child and grandchild of survivors and I know from family history the horrors of the Holocaust. Human beings are capable of extraordinary things, both good and bad. We believe that education offers hope and is the only way we can create a better future. So thank you for your interest in Holocaust education, for your support, and for being here today. Okay, uh, it is a joy to introduce Linda Medvin. Linda is batting cleanup today as our final speaker. Linda is chair of the Florida Holocaust Task Force, and she is a dear friend. Linda, please. Thank you, Sam. Today, I am very honored to represent the Commissioner of Education, Pam Stewart, um, at the, the opening of the Courage to Remember. And on her behalf, I thank the sponsors of this exhibit, SNCF, and the gracious host, St. Thomas Aquinas. I'm a Broward person, so I've dealt with St. Thomas over the years many times. As the chair of the task force, I was in Tallahassee to welcome this exhibit from the Simon Wieselthal Center, and I spoke to legislators, educators, and members of the community. I've welcomed the same exhibit to Naples, to Broward County at the David Posnick JCC, to the Tampa Bay area, to Orlando and Jacksonville, and it's making its way around the state of Florida, sort of a roadshow. Dr. Uh, Cantalevi and I are on. This exhibit, The Courage to Remember, is comprised of nearly 200 photographs and offers compelling new insights into the Holocaust. For those of you that are teachers in our audience, there are educational resources available to continue the study and to enhance the study of this exhibit on the Simon Wieselthal website. The goal for this exhibit is to be ex displayed at sites throughout Florida and viewed by students, by educators, and by the community. The exhibit itself, what you see out in the lobby, is very important, but I am an I'm an educator, and it's only a part of what we as educators must do. To remember is an introspective, but an, impor an important but still a passive activity. More important is not to forget. To not forget requires action. To not forget requires doing something. To not forget requires learning about the Holocaust in all of Europe, not only Poland, and in the East, but also the Holocaust in the Netherlands and Greece and even in France. To not forget requires education. 
As chair of the Florida Department of Education Commissioner's Task Force on Holoca Holocaust Education, a mouthful, very important. My charge when I was appointed as chair in 2009 was to bring the task force out of the political arena where it had been sitting and back to where it belonged, back to education for Florida's teaching professionals, administrators, and ultimately to Florida's classrooms and students. Every day there is new information from published research and opened archives, as well as updated pedagogies and strategies to bring the most current and relevant information to Florida's classrooms. In order to not forget, we must use these resources to serve the Task Force Nine, task force nine designated sites. And here in Broward County, we have the Holocaust Documentation Center in Hollywood. We have Florida Atlantic University, um, Center for Holocaust Human Rights Education in, in Boca Raton, as well as other community resources that are uh, there for the taking and, and there for the using. We must provide, as educators, both human and financial resources to offer professional learning and programs for educators and for students. In order to not forget, we must take advantage of all opportunities and all funding sources to fulfill and advance the mission of the task force. In this time of uncertain and limited funding for educational programs, we do not have the luxury of picking and choosing where funds should come from and whose we will accept and whose we will refuse. We are guided by a sense of urgency to educate, especially while we still have the survivors of the Holocaust to assist us. In order to not forget, we must listen to what survivors of the Holocaust have been telling me for 25 years. Linda, they say, tell my story. Teach it to the children, to the young people. Don't teach them to hate. Teach them, show them, and tell them what he hate did to us and what hate can do to this world. Use the lessons of the Holocaust so it does not happen again. So have the courage to remember, but more importantly, have the courage not to forget, because only through education can may we make this a better world for the future. Remember, do not forget, but most importantly, educate. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna have a ribbon cutting in one, two, three.